So tonight and in the past few weeks, we've been talking about trailblazers, and we've been talking about the footsteps of Jesus, who was one of the biggest trailblazers throughout all of history. And so we've talked about Jesus a lot, and we've learned a lot of things about him, but you may still have some questions about Jesus. You may be thinking, well, what was his favorite song? Like, what did he do on his day off? Like, all kinds of different questions. Maybe he had a favorite joke or something. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're wondering, well, did Jesus go to the bathroom, like, so well that, like, he didn't even have to wipe when he went to the bathroom? Like, that's how good. Like, maybe you were wondering all those questions. Another question you may be wondering, like, what, did Jesus ever make a mistake? Like, we know he didn't sin, but did he ever, like, stub his toe or something? I know a mistake that I recently made back a few months ago. It was during football season, and so we had went to this football game in my hometown where I'm from, and so we were sitting up at the top of the bleachers, and so we were just getting, like, killed by the other team. And so I was like, well, it's almost over. I'm going to go ahead and leave before traffic gets too bad and stuff like that. So I go to head down the stairs, and, like, immediately I looked like a cartoon character. Like, my feet went flying up in the air on these wet bleachers where it had been raining. And all the way down, I was like, boom, 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 all the way down to the bottom of the bleachers. And so immediately I was like, what just happened? Like, what just happened to me? And I was, like, in shock. And so then, like, as I, like, figure out what just happened, I look at my phone, and my phone is, like, shattered. And so I was like, are you kidding me? And so that's what I was, like, most worried about in that moment. But it gave me a really good reason to get the new iPhone on pre-order. So that ended up being good. But the next day, I was, like, bruised from head to toe, and I was super sore. But in the moment... All these people around me, like, everybody looked at me, like, immediately and was like, are you all right? One girl was like, do we need to call an ambulance? And my mom was like, do I need to, like, take you to the emergency room? I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. When in reality, I was, like, about to die, and I was, like, hobbling up the steps coming up to the office the next day. And so a lot of times when we have hard things happen, when we have emotional injuries or something go on in our life, Maybe they're not physical injuries, but maybe some other kind of thing that you're going on. A lot of times, people try to give you the, ro the wrong first aid kit. So they try to give you the first aid kit that most people think about. The one that has bandages and maybe some wrap. And so maybe some band-aids or something like that. They try to fix the situation. And in reality, we need this other first aid kit. In this first aid kit, the first thing I've got is my phone. So sometimes when people are hurting, they don't need a first aid kit. They don't need you to fix them. They don't need you to solve their problems. They just need somebody to call on. And maybe you're that person. You need somebody that you can just give a call to and be able to talk through a situation. The second thing I have is my favorite snack, Kit Kats. Like, they're the OG of snacks. But sometimes we just need somebody to show up with a snack and be like, hey, I see you in this moment. I may not understand what you're going through or what you need right now, but I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to show up for you. And the third thing I've got in here are some car keys. So sometimes we just need somebody to come and just pick us up and remove us from the situation there in that moment. And so in this series, we've been talking about trailblazers, and basically what a trailblazer is, is somebody who breaks the trail. And so what I mean by that is sometimes when you're walking through snow in a big group, I don't know if any of y'all have ever, ever done this, but if you're walking through the trail with a bunch of snow that's fresh, it's really hard to walk through. And so there's always somebody who goes in front of the group and they pack down the trail, and they start to pack down the snow, and it makes it easier for everybody else to go behind them. And so sometimes we have trailblazers in life that maybe they don't pack down the snow, but they might break down barriers in life and in society for all the other people to come before them, or I guess after them. And so a lot of times when we're going through something hard or we have something painful going on in our lives, it's 
feels hard because we don't feel like anybody can relate to us. But a lot of times when those trailblazers in life, when maybe they die suddenly or something happens to them, it feels easier because everybody can relate because everybody, it seems like, is going through that pain around you. And so this past Sunday, we celebrated Easter Sunday. And Easter Sunday celebrates Jesus' resurrection. And so we think of Easter as being this awesome, amazing, happy day that people all around the world this Sunday, they came together and they celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. But you know, before that, we had Good Friday, a couple days before, which is the day that Jesus was crucified. You see, a lot of times to have something like the resurrection that's a super happy thing, a super exciting thing, it comes with bad things before it. That's what makes it so exciting. You know, for us to see a miracle happen, we've got to first see a sickness happen. For somebody to have a really awesome testimony, they've got to go through something really hard. And so a lot of those good things that we go through, it's because of the bad experiences that we had happen to us before that. And so before the people that were actually there in that moment when Jesus died on the cross, before he came up out of the grave, they first had to endure uh, Good Friday, which is when they were having to go through all these hard things and all these emotions of Jesus passing away. Jesus was their trailblazer in life. And so when he died on the cross, it brought them all together. And so if you've got your Bibles, I want you to open up and flip to Matthew 27, 27 through 44. I'll wait on y'all. Matthew 27, 27 through 44. All right. Are most of y'all there? Pretty close. All right. So Matthew 27, 27 through 44, it starts out and it says, some of the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the headquarters, and they called out an enti the entire regiment. They stripped him and put him in a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. They placed a reed stick in his right hand as a scepter. And so, you know, a lot of times we think of God as being this person, maybe he can perform miracles, he can give us all these blessings. He can do all these things to us. But I think a lot of times we don't feel like he's a God that we can relate to. We don't feel like he can relate to what we're going through. But in reality, he can. Because when Jesus came down to earth, he was God in an earthly form. And so when he was on earth and through the crucifixion, he endured all this pain. And so the first pain that he endured was physical pain. And so then it goes on and it says, Then they knelt before him in mockery and taunted, Hail the king of the Jews. And they spit on him and grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. Then they were finally tired of mocking him and they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. So in this moment, they mocked him and they made fun of him and all of these things, and they insulted him. And so if you've ever felt that insult, Jesus was there going through that, and he can relate to that. And so and then in verse 32, it says, Along the way, they came across a man named Simon, who was from Syrian. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when they had trashed it, he refused to drink it. When he tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled first, closed by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries hang beside him, one on the right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. 
You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well, then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from this cross. And if you've ever felt misunderstood and didn't feel like Jesus could relate to you, right here, he relates to you because Jesus was super misunderstood in this moment. And so then in verse 41, it says, The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saves others. They scoffled, but he can't even save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same day. And so when Jesus was arrested and eventually killed, he endured all these different types of pains that we endure. The first type of pain he endured was physical pain. You know, some of y'all in here, y'all might have some kind of disability You may have some kind of physical hurt, something wrong with you physically um, or health-wise. And maybe you feel like, well, God can't relate to me in that. But in reality, he can. He went through super excruciating physical pain. He was beaten. He was hung from a cross. He was whipped. I mean, all these terrible things he endured. The second thing that he endured was he endured the pain of being insulted. Maybe you had somebody who, I don't know, like said something mean to you or something like that, made fun of you or something like that, and you just felt like God couldn't relate to that. But in this moment, he was. Jesus was insulted like big time in this moment. The third thing is he felt the pain of betrayal. Maybe you had a friend or something like that you felt like was a really close friend And then for some reason, they told a lie about you, or maybe they said, I don't want to be your friends friends with you anymore. I want to be friends with this other person, and I don't like you anymore. And you felt that sense of betrayal. But in that moment, God can relate to you because he felt that betrayal. He had plenty of people betray him in these days. He had tons of people who were super close to him, in fact, that betrayed him in this time. And so the fourth thing was he felt the pain of seeing his loved ones in pain. You know, maybe you've experienced having maybe a loved one go through something painful. Maybe you've had a mom or a dad or maybe a brother or sister who has been in some kind of physical pain. Or maybe you've had um, your parents get a divorce and you've seen them go through pain or something like that and you felt like in that moment no one else especially not God could relate to that but he can because Jesus as he was hanging on that cross he had his mother Mary sitting right down below him sitting there watching as he endured all of this and there was nothing that she could do and so she he had to sit there on the cross and watch his mom agonize over sitting there watching him being beaten and killed. And so the last thing, the last pain that Jesus endured was being misunderstood. You know, maybe, and I feel like pretty much everybody in this room, especially like if you're middle school or high school, like I feel like that's when it's the worst. I feel like that was the worst time for me of being misunderstood. Maybe um, you felt like you didn't fit in or something like that during middle school or high school, and you felt like, well, Jesus can't relate to that. He, he always fit in. Like, the dude could do all kinds of things. Obviously, he fit in, but he didn't in this time. He was being super misunderstood. They were saying, well, you're a phony. You're not real. All these things about him. And maybe you feel that same way sometimes, but God can relate to that. So what I want you to get out of all that is, no, God is not incapable of experiencing your pain. God is not incapable of being able to relate to your pain. And then there's actually somebody 
who tried to relate to Jesus' pain. And so if you still got your Bibles out, I want you to flip to Philippians 3, 10 through 14. And so in the book of Philippians, um, the apostle Paul, he wrote to, he was one of the earliest church leaders. And so he's writing to the church. And so in this moment, he's talking about how he wants to relate to God's pain or Jesus's pain. He wants to see it. He wants to be able to discover it and be able to actually, like, I guess, feel it. And so he says in verse 10, he says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. In verse 12 it says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And so basically in this, he's saying he wants to relate to Jesus' pain. He wants to go through the pain that Jesus went through and be able to completely understand it. And so in this moment, we're probably thinking, well, why would Paul want to go through all that? Like, Jesus' death seems like awful. Like, why would you want to go through that? And in reality, he doesn't mean that he actually wants to go up and be crucified and die on the cross and all of this. What he's saying is he wants to put his old life to death. He wants to put his sins to death. He doesn't want to, he wants to become a new person. You know, a lot of times we were actually having a conversation a few days ago and we were talking about baptisms and things like that. And so some churches like growing up around me, um, I think a lot of it had to do with like the way you get saved is being baptized. And so in reality, it's baptism is not how you get saved. It's a public display of being raised from death to life. And it gives a really good show of what it means when you become a new person. You go into the water and you come out a new person. And so a lot of times we think, well, we still got this one little thing we're holding on to, kind of like what Brandon was talking about this Sunday if you were here for Easter. He was talking about how we always have one thing that we're holding up and we're not letting it go out of the we're not letting it go under the water and be put to death so that we can raise up in a new life. So tonight I want you to be thinking about what is that one thing that I'm still holding up out of water? What is that one thing that I'm not laying to death? What is that one thing that I'm not allowing myself to live in a new life? And so he went through all of these things and he invites, he wants to understand all that Jesus went through. And so like I said earlier, when they were going through Good Friday, he was experiencing all these bad things. And so to experience that good thing, you have to experience the bad things. And so when you're being baptized, when you're getting saved, you're being, you're putting down your old life and it's going to death and you're being raised up as a new person. You're experiencing something new. And so the main thing I want you to get out of tonight is that God understands our pain. He can relate to our pain. He understands it. And so tonight, I want you to be thinking about what kind of pain are you feeling? What kind of pain are you feeling tonight? And so tonight, maybe you're feeling some physical pain. Kind of like what I said earlier, maybe you are got some kind of disability or you're, maybe you even just have a headache right now. Maybe... Um, I don't know, you're like wobbling around like Doug was a couple weeks ago with your leg all messed up or something like that. 
Maybe you're, phys- you're dealing with that physical pain. Maybe you're dealing with some emotional pain. Maybe you've had some stuff that you never really worked through. Maybe you had some past hurts as a child that you went through, and you've never worked through that pain. You've never moved on for that pain. Maybe you've had some kind of spiritual pain. Maybe you're struggling right now because of the sin that feels like it has control of your life. Maybe you keep on trying to break away from that sin, but you just keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on going back. It's if you remember Jesus willingly took the weight of your sin so that you could have freedom and a new life. You don't have to carry that pain alone anymore. You can finally move on. I watched this uh, movie yesterday, and so it was about this guy and his son. He was like all-star athlete. He had super great grades, was good at riding, had got into like multiple Ivy Leagues that he had applied for and like got into all six of these colleges and universities. And in that moment, he found out in this movie that he had been using opioids and smoking weed and doing all these crazy things for like two years before he even went to school. And then he goes off and he becomes hooked on methamphetamine. And so he'll go a little while, and this is like a true story, he would go a little while and he'd be hooked on meth, and then he would be like, I don't want to do this anymore. And like he would truly be sorry about what he was doing. And he wanted to get away from it so bad. He wanted to get away from it so bad. But he would always keep on following back. And he said the thing, this is years later afterwards, he's in this meeting and he's talking to all these other people around him who are struggling with drug addiction, and he's been sober for a few years or whatever. And he says the thing that clicked in his mind the most is he woke up from an overdose in a hospital, and he wakes up, and the nurse or doctor or whoever it was was like, who are you? And he says, my name's so-and-so, and I'm an alcoholic and an addict. And she said, no, that's not what, that's not who you are. That's not what defines you. You've got to change how you think of yourself. And so I think a lot of times we think of ourselves like that. We define ourselves by that sin that we keep on going back to over and over and over. And we keep on holding it above the water and we're not willing to let go of it. And so tonight I want you to think about what is that that I need to let go of? What is that in my life that I need to stop defining myself by? That I need to stop saying, you know what, I'm an alcoholic. I'm addicted to this. I'm maybe addicted to porn. I'm addicted to this or that. Or I just, I'm not good at relationships. Maybe you need to stop getting into relationship one after another and just take some time to be single and have a relationship with God. And so tonight, I want us to recognize other people's pain, be able to relate to other people's pain that what they're going through. And so the first way we can do that is, number one, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Be willing to choose to enter into our pain in order to help us find a way out. We don't need to literally die for each other in order to do that, but we need to choose to get involved in each other's lives when things get painful. Everybody in this room, you can't say you aren't, is going through something. Everybody in this room is experiencing some kind of pain that you need to work through. And I'd be willing to bet that if you brought up your pain in your small groups, and you talk through it, you would find somebody else who is going through something similar. Somebody who can somewhat relate to what you're going through. And that brings me to my next point. We've got to press on together. 
We're in this together. The Apostle Paul talked about pressing on in his faith, but when life is painful, that can be the diff- that can be difficult to do alone. We need each other when life is painful, and we need each other to help us put an end to our old sinful lives. We can't do it alone. I've talked about plenty of times about accountability. Accountability, and basically what that is, is discipleship. You know, one of our core things here at Youth is we want to build disciples before they go off out of high school. And so one of those ways that is an easy way of doing that is building discipleship in your small groups. Finding those people who you can lean on and press on together with. The third thing you can do is you can pray with each other. Pray with each other. You know, I feel like we constantly were like, well, if you're going through something, pray about it. And it seems like this simple thing And we're like, well, that's simple. But how many of y'all, like, praying is the hardest thing ever. Just to sit down and spend time with God. Be able to pray with your friends. Be able to pray together and be able to work through things together. You know, when life is painful or we're struggling to move on from a sin that's controlling us, it can feel like we're the only one fighting that battle. It feels like we're all alone. And so sometimes you may not know what to say. It might be hard just praying alone. So like grab somebody that you know that's around you and pray together. Because just like Jesus stands with us in our pain, we can stand with each other in prayer.